We are only three days into the new season and we've already got a new sacking. Gary O'Neill has been sacked by Bournemouth FC. But what does this mean for Gary O'Neill? What does this mean for Bournemouth? What does this mean for their new manager, Ariola? Let's just kick into the video and find out. This has come as a bit of a shock, hasn't it, for Gary O'Neill and Bournemouth. Obviously, last season, you lost the manager, Scott Parker, inevitably after the 9-0. However, that was after the Bournemouth board did disagree with how Scott Parker dealt with the 9-0 loss rather than the actual loss itself. And ultimately, everyone thought that was it for Bournemouth last season. 39 points, tremendous, tremendous achievement for Gary O'Neill. Almost above Chelsea, which says a lot for either side, you could say. But the ambition of the Bournemouth board has probably shown the true colours in this regard, hasn't it? Gary O'Neill has been sacked. Iriola has come in charge now. Five years of experience, four, 40 years old, three years at Real Vallecano, up with them from the second division, 12th and 11th respectively. Has beaten the likes of Real Madrid last season, 3-2, Villarreal 2-1, and of course the champions 2-1. So it's not a manager that could be you know, he can't be understated. Marseille wanted him, Leeds wanted him in February, and Monaco wanted him earlier on in the season. And in actual fact, because it's so early in the summer, only three days into it, it makes it a lot easier for the Bournemouth players, the Bournemouth staff, and the ones that he wants to bring in to bed into this Bournemouth squad. If you're going to make the decision, make it early, and they've done the right choice there. And obviously, this Bournemouth board is very ambitious. Bought the club for 100 million last season, spent 75 million in the transfer windows, and not to forget that they only spent 15 million of that in this summer as well. So, is this a case of potentially flying too close to the sun, like Icarus? Is this a case of the grass isn't always greener? Is this a case of changing your style when you have to, when it's needed? Or is this a case of having the very ambitious owners? You know, I mentioned the fact that you spent 100 million um, on the club. You spent 75 million in the transfer windows. And not to forget that they bought it in November, meaning that 75 of that million, the whole summarization of the transfer window essentially was in January. And that's probably why you survived. You know, you could talk about Gary O'Neill, how, how well he coached the players, but ultimately, you bought the the right sort of players last season and there has been plenty of clubs like Leicester, like Leeds, Southampton, Everton, you could name a few that just didn't do that and Bournemouth did that to a T. They were so efficient in the transfer windows and in their business. Like now, you know, three days into it, let's get rid of the player, person that we don't want, the manager that we don't want and let's bring in the manager that we do want and let's do it early. No faff, that's what you need. But you got a feel for Gary O'Neill. Obviously, he did get sacked after having an amazing campaign. It can't be understated how well he did last season. I'm trying to uh, devalue him slightly by saying that the transfer window was a lot better than other clubs. But ultimately, you've got to coach him, haven't you? Give it time. Give it a few months. We'll, we'll see Gary O'Neill in another job, be it the Championship, be it the Premier League. But his stock has risen. Bournemouth has risen now. We all thought they were coming 20th last season. That might need to change for this season as well. It's exciting for Bournemouth. It's exciting in the long run for Gary O'Neill, I suppose. Because give it give it three months, I'm sure he would have got sacked anyway. Let's let's be honest. Let's be frank about that. What's next for Bournemouth? Well, I mean, let's just carry on the same, I suppose. That's probably what they're thinking. We sacked Scott Parker pretty quickly and it worked out well. Can they do the same thing again? Uh, it doesn't really work that way in such a, a such a low scoring game as such a high pressured sport it's such a high risk uh, sport as well but i do feel for gary o'neill exciting times though for bournemouth uh, i'm looking forward to seeing what happens now and uh, how our areola progresses with this bournemouth squad and if you haven't already can you go and subscribe to the channel do appreciate all subscribers that do get obviously like i said before and if you haven't already can you go and subscribe to the podcast channel and my uh, good friend Cal Nicol has just made a uh, channel himself, a YouTube channel. This is why I'm doing this now. He's given me the motivation to do it. So go over, head over there, go give it a subscribe. Is it? A massive Liverpool fan, but he loves the sport as much as me, and he knows it as well, if not more than myself. I'm sure he will speak about this in a more eloquent way. He's a lot better at English than I am. But I hope you all have a lovely day. Hope Gary O'Neill has a lovely evening. I'm sure that conversation is fine. Um, and I hope all Bournemouth fans have a interesting couple of days ahead <laughs> of you, haven't you? So I will see you all very, very soon. Cheers, guys.